Good evening once more, everybody. My name is Stefan Franke, and I'd like to introduce the next show. I'm standing here because this festival is about music archives, and I'm running an archive for an online archive for Mira Music. It's called Sympathetic Resonances, and you can reach it here. There you can listen to transcriptions of Mbira of all sorts, and people can create and share their own materials. Meanwhile, it became the biggest public resource on Matipe music, the type of Mbira we're gonna hear next. Most content comes from Andrew Tracy of the International Library of African Music, whose former director, Diane Fram, we have here today. Lauter? Okay. So most content comes from Andrew Tracy of the International Library of African Music, whose former director, Diane Thram, we have here today. Let's hear an example. The Matipa piece Ndonda by Kadori. It's a field recording by uh, field recording pioneer Hugh Tracy, and it dates back to as early as 1933. Transcription of one player's part as on the website with the sound of a contemporary instrument. In future, I'd like to turn this website into a mobile learning app for cheap smartphones, which are everywhere. But this is a lot of work and requires funding, which is hard to get for things that basically no one knows about. So I'm very grateful for the HKW to let us present today a bit of Mbira diversity on stage. I'd also like to thank all other people who make this event possible. Mbira is often called the national instrument of Zimbabwe, but in Zimbabwe alone there are five major types and many variants. Some with very different playing techniques and repertoire. Two of them are still quite popular, and one of them became quite popular. You have, with two generations of artists in the media, an instrument exported around the world. The other types are in constant decline, some almost extinct. My friend Jocelyn Moon did a four years research on Matepe, and she only came across a few families and less than 10 master musicians for that instrument. So, why bother? Well, there are so many fascinating aspects about Matepe music, so let me just pick one which I find most remarkable. Kaleidophony. What is this? It's the phenomenon of hearing cyclic music in different ways, depending on where in the loop you put your sensation of a downbeat. These effects are put to use in many percussive traditions in Africa and around the world, as well as by electronic musicians and DJs. But I have yet to hear, I have yet to come across a music which takes it as far as Matipa. Actually, the term kaleidophony was invented by Andrew Tracy in his article about Matipa music in 1970. You start listening to a perfectly familiar tune somewhere in the middle and you suddenly hear an entirely different song with a different tonal center, different melodic lines and different rhythmic patterns. It's astounding. Of course, this is no accident but an ancient art. Scholars attribute this ambiguity to a kind of self-similar geometry within the harmonic progressions. And Matipin music is already created from multiple points of view. Each, each musician plays similar patterns, but with a slightly shifted rhythmic perspective. And out comes an interlock fabric where subtle changes in one pattern can have dramatic effects on the overall texture. 
In the performance, people improvise vocal parts based on bits from the texture which resonate with them. It's a participatory, multi-perspective community experience. Well, so this California thing sounds awesome. Let's hear it. Well, chances are you won't, at least at first. And why is this? Well, this is what the whole internet was looking at 10 years ago, about 10 years ago. It's a bistable optical illusion. And does it turn left or right? And can you switch between both ways of perception? You see that changing perspectives deliberately is not easy. Once the brain locks into one perspective, it masks out the other options, actually. The same is true for the ear. Depending on, we, on, on what we grew up with, we have all sorts, we, have all, we all have different rhythmical preferences and blind spots. Or actually, deaf spots. Our brain tends to look for information where it is used to find that information. And if your hearing got formatted like mine by like globalized Western music, those blind spots can be huge. An example, the simple ability to connect steady notes to a line is highly dependent on their rhythmical position, position of the cycle. So let's take this, the example of that simple bass line which Ambuya Stavichuvesha was just playing. If I sing, it's easy, it's on the beat. But if I, if I sing it behind, it's like, dun, 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 which is actually her perspective while playing. It's, it's either, what usually happens that either m my beat perception snaps to where this bass line is, or if there's already satisfying information on the beat, it actually ignores these notes. It doesn't really hear them. And well, that could just, oh, wait, wait, wait. this just could be me but I would like to <laughs> run a public experiment. I think public experiments are doomed to fail. <laughs> well, let's try. Let's test our perception, our diversity. Please clap where you feel a beat in this video. some majority thing going on. <laughs> All right, let's run another example, the same tune, but I'm going to introduce these, um, these bass notes one by one. And please, when you feel a beat in this one, please don't clap this time to not influence the others. And just notice if you feel a change somewhere. there was a change going on in his perception. Please raise your hand. No? Uh, some. A few? Okay. <laughs> so to wrap things up, um, with my tape a different music in the room may hear very different music and it's easy to stay locked in your own perspective and stay locked and think you've heard it all. And for me that's a beautiful metaphor for pretty much everything that I want to close with. Thank you very much. Please welcome on this stage, probably the first time ever to hear a Matepe ensemble in Germany or even in Europe or outside Southern Africa, the Zonka family from Zimbabwe.